Here's what you get with this episode of the Nice Guys on Business. We can outwork ourselves to a level of stress that makes you much less productive, much less happy, and much less healthy. And that's not a winning formula either. And so the idea of just letting that air into you, you know, that sounds kind of simple and silly, you know, but it's it's a powerful idea. Badges? They don't need no stinking badges. Need an education on how to grow your business? The nice guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Hey, nice guy community. Welcome back. Welcome back. Funkin' fans, it is Wednesday. My name is Strickland Bonner on the other side of the microphone, Mr. Doug Sandler, and we have an interview today with Mr. Sidney Finkelstein. Yeah, I, I, I mispronounced his name like 1,700 times on the show. And you're Jewish. Well, you see, you can't figure that my, out. My my dad was Finstein. Okay. <laughs> and everybody Finstein. Used to, how did you get? Well, how did you get? My step, sorry, that? my my stepdad was Finstein. Uh, okay. But but everybody called him Finstein. So oh, okay. I, I I've, the my entire life I've been correcting people with the name. Well, first of all, my name's not Finkel Finstein. <laughs> my name is Sandler. And, but Sydney, Doctor Sydney, Professor. I'm sorry, not Doctor. Maybe he's a doctor. Is he a doctor? He's a he's a professor doctor, not like a medical doctor, but yeah, he's got his PhD. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. So he was a really important guy then, right? He is. I mean, he's got a great book called Super Bosses, and which is really interesting. It's all about, you know, how to bring out the the energy in your employees as a boss. It's basically how to how exceptional leaders master the flow of talent. That's the tagline. And it really is about if if you're the boss or you're the manager, you're trying to motivate people, how do you motivate your people and how do you focus them? I mean, it's, it's really interesting stuff. Would, would you say that, because I, I know that you, you have a couple people in your department. Are you considered somebody's boss? I'm not right now. We're getting ready to go through some reorganization, <laughs> like hey, literally well, in the next week, and strict, I may end up being a supervisor. Strict, I don't know. Will your will your uh, position be impacted? Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my position will be impacted. I hope it, it could be challenging. Strict, are, are you ready for like what the next plan is? If if something hap- if you got laid off from your job, would, would you have a do you have a plan B right now? Nope. That would be probably like a turnkey podcast is plan B, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, we really need to step up the step up the gain. Speaking of which, can I can I just make a couple of really quick uh a quick announcements, some housekeeping yeah. stuff, and then we'll get to then we'll get to uh to uh, Sydney Finkelstein's interview? Yeah, make it quick. Okay. <laughs> God, thanks, Dad. <laughs> make it fast. All right, well, don't forget, nice guy, community, Funkin' fans, uh, if you have not yet signed up for the text to join, make sure you go to your texting app. You want to type to 31996, the word nice guys, N-I-C-E-G-U-Y-S, no spaces. Uh, we are giving away one T-shirt a week, and that will put you on our um, on our little mailing list. Just answer the question that is asked to you when you get a text back. But again, 31996, text the word nice guys and you will be joining our uh, our nice guy community um, also if you have not had a chance to, yet to uh, to please recommend us take a moment you can go back as many episodes as you want we know that over 90 percent or close to 90 percent of you listen on overcast which is a, a very cool app uh, that uh, that brings you the nice guys on business podcast along with the c-suite radio network and the greatness podcast network also <laughs> make sure you go there and just hit the little uh, little gold star and recommend our our episode. Okay, so uh, we did the little housekeeping things. It was very simple. Strick, I like the new streamlined version. We have not uh, no commercials this week. What? What? No, no com- commercials. No commercials. Well, yeah. Okay. No commercials the whole week. We're giving our Funkin' fans a break. So any of you who start the episode and then hit skip, 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 you, yeah, you missed the good stuff. Yeah, you, you, you missed it week. already. You, you can go back. There was no commercial. But but since you're here already, um, patreon.com forward slash nice guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to join our Slack group or any of those fun things, uh, we have reward levels that start at a buck. Again, patreon.com forward slash nice guys. That's all with the commercials. We're, we're giving it to you commercial free. No, is that not actually commercial free? It is kind of commercial free, though. Is it? Did did you did you mention the texting where they can win a T-shirt? Where were you? I just did that. I couldn't remember if you did that. <laughs> you that was literally sixty seconds ago that I did that. Sidney Finkelstein <laughs> talks about being a super boss and a couple of the things that are in the super boss playbook. Yeah. All uh, right. 
Oh, well, you're researching. The, the, <laughs> Sorry. the two that I love. Okay. Oh, I'm 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 excused because I was uh, researching. Yeah, yeah. I give I okay. give you a, a hall pass for for doing Thank research on that. on on Sydney. Okay. A couple of the ones that I like. There are eight highlighted ones in the Super Boss Playbook of things that you want to do when yeah. you're recruiting. Yeah. The two that I really like. Number one, recruit for intelligence, creativity, and adaptability, right? Mm, so it's a little bit obvious. Like you want to recruit intelligent people, but also creativity and adaptability. But yeah. the other one I like is adapt the role of organization to fit the talent, right? Like how many companies have a role? You have a position, right? And you hire somebody for that position, but you realize there are certain aspects of the position that maybe they're not so good at, yeah, right? Yeah. And other things that they have a real talent for, but are not necessarily part of their responsibility. Well, really, you've got to get the most out of your people. So don't ever be afraid. And again, I'm making assumptions as to what he's talking about here, but I've, I have a feeling this is what he's talking about is you want to adapt the role to best suit the employee for a couple of reasons. First of all, you obviously want to get the most that you can out of the employee. You want them to be as efficient as possible. But also, when they're doing things that they're good at and they're efficient at, they're going to be more motivated and they're going to want to stick around and they're going to feel the success of that. Whereas when you've got a piece of a job that maybe a certain person is not very good at, they're, they're going to get frustrated and they're not going to be as motivated. Well, either that or worse, they're going to leave. And, you know, we, we talked with uh, with Aaron Levy a couple of weeks ago on uh, on the 12th last Friday about um, about how expensive it is when somebody leaves their job it would be much better to do something with uh with somebody that's internal that just has a maybe they just have a slightly different set of skills that uh if you can adapt the organization to them it's not all about them molding to the corporation it could be a little bit more of the corporation molding to the personality of the person that is in the position so uh cool interview interesting interview with uh with sydney finkelstein so why don't we why don't we hop into it because uh we got a lot to we have this is a jam-packed week I know it is crazy. You know that that episode yesterday that was a little long. <laughs> you know what? I got a bad feeling that Thursday is going to be long if we bring Sean back. Also, <laughs> oh no, yeah, we yeah. um, it, it it was very interesting. The entire week has been it, it's been just sailing by. I mean, right now I'm in Dallas and enjoying my time in Dallas. Does it sound like I'm in Dallas? Do I have this? Do I have a little bit of a Dallas feel to the recording, or do I? Do not I, whatsoever. Not, not at all. Not whatsoever. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm in Dallas. I'm coming back today, and uh, we're going to record tomorrow's episode with uh, with Sean and have a good time. And then we got another great episode on uh, on Friday as well. So why don't we get to the interview? With, we have five days a week, Strickland. I am just getting so tired. I know. Can can we can we say this week is a lot of fuckery, or will Sydney kind of get offended by that? Mm. He seems like a kind of a straight guy. No, he is doctor. You know what he would get more offended with? What if we said that I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's good because he won't hear that because I'll beep it out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like that. That's good. <laughs> Do you, you listen to ever let one slip by ever i did apparently you know it's funny we were talking at the four corners pub uh last week with uh paul oh, we didn't and even ryan. mention our our visit with our funkin fans paul and ryan i know and, you, and we were going to yeah. use the recording of it at the beginning of either our tuesday or thursday show but yeah. they're both so fucking long that we really can't even add it we haven't even talked about it though can you're you, right can you maybe just just take like a 60 i would i hate to I, i'd hate to ignore those guys Let's see. Today's the Wednesday episode. Did we did we put it into Tuesday's episode even just uh, sixty seconds? You know what? Maybe we could do. Maybe I'll put it in at the end oh. as as twenty minutes of bonus material. That'd be pretty fun. <laughs> wow! Somebody's gonna look at that episode and say it's an hour. Because uh, what was yesterday's episode? It was almost an hour, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was close. It's gonna to be an hour. an hour and twenty minutes. Do you think that would turn somebody off from even starting the episode? It's possible. Yeah, uh, you, maybe what you put in is in the title. You do the name of the, uh, the you know, you do a regular title and then put the word in really big letters plus bonus or bonus colon end of yeah, episode maybe. last twenty minutes. Maybe that was a really really good time though. I had such a good time hanging with Paul and Ryan. I mean that was that was fun. And Paul pointed out that there was one episode. In fact, it was one of the first episodes I think that I started beeping your age out. Yeah. And that you said it twice in kind of rapid succession. And I beeped the first one and missed the second one. But I don't know what episode it is, and I'm not going to go back and mention it because I don't <laughs> want Funkin' Fans to go. Yeah. Find so Funkin' Fans, if you want to listen for the number, uh, just go ahead and listen to the last. Uh, 368 episodes. Yeah, that would be... Or if be you really want to find out, you could 
to donate five bucks on Patreon. And join oh, a Slack yeah, that's very we'll true. That's very true. All right, that's that's enough of a commercial about yeah. about that. Um, you know, so we didn't talk about that. And oh shit, there wasn't. Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to just mention was we we came up with this bold idea, and I don't know if it's actually going to take any shape here, but the idea of um, of zipping up the, me- the <laughs> zipping up the episodes. You know, we ha- we have blocks of 100 episodes that we could put on a Dropbox account. Does anybody have any interest in that? I think we need to wait. If we if we have somebody either tweet to us or post on the Facebook group of like, hey, I'd, I would download that if you did it, then maybe we'll put it up on Dropbox. For okay, some, interesting. For people, yeah. All right, Strickland, next week. It's too week, big for Patreon. Ne- next week, we really need to start focusing on what episode 400 looks like. So I would say oh God, next, yeah, next Tuesday... Um, I say that we start to put together the plans for for what episode 400 looks like. Because in my mind, we have a lot of people that are involved. But then again, my, the challenge is when you have a lot of people, so much noise going on. Yeah. Maybe it's just we do our show, but we have a live we have a live recording of the show on Zoom, and we invite people, or we do it kind of like a webinar, and we take the recording. But people are people are muted when they come in, uh, but they can ask us questions and they can see us. Yeah, but you know, I can fix that in the mix if we do it on Zencaster because it's all separate. I mean, it's a lot more work for me, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I guess we could do that, too. Okay, well, we'll figure. I, I don't can know. Can we talk about Sydney? It's really, <laughs> this is not, we should not be getting off yeah. on this tangent right now. Very, very true. Very true. Next week, we'll talk about all this. All right, let's get to, uh, let's get to Professor Sid, Sydney Finkelstein uh, right here on the C-Suite. <laughs> what the hell are we? Right here. <sighs> nice Guys nice. on Business Podcast. Proud to be represented, sponsored. Affiliated. What are we represented with? Affiliated. The, affiliated with, yes. It's. It's such a fine line between <laughs> stupid and clever. Oh, I, um, we're yeah, between on, we're yeah. affiliated with the C Suite Radio Network and the Greatness Podcast Network. All right, let's get to the interview right here. Want to be a super boss, or maybe you consider yourself a super something else. It rhymes with itch, but I'm not going to say it anymore. And want to change that? Today's nice guys guest. Professor Sidney Finkelstein is here today to share his expertise about building a great leadership model, ready for some new, useful, and maybe some unexpected ideas to lead others. Get set because Sid is here. Welcome, Sid, to the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Great to be on with you, Doug. I am I am so happy that uh, that we were put together. I think that maybe even Mar in my Nice Guy community uh, connected us. Uh, she, she does a great job, but you don't remember how we came together originally, do you? I, I don't, but I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm delighted to uh, to have the chat. So I I love 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 the idea of your book. It's called is it Super Bosses? Is that the name of your book? Yes. Exactly. So, okay, so Super Bosses just getting underway, but there's so many nuggets of wisdom in there, Sid. So why don't you tell the nice guy community just a bit about your journey to this leadership expert uh status because in looking at your your entire history, I know you wrote a lot of um uh, a lot of academic books, but you have something like 21 books to your credit. So why don't you share a little bit about your your uh, your journey to this leadership expert status yeah sure so um, I've been a uh, lifelong uh, academic that's done a bunch of little entrepreneurial things along the way but I uh, remain headquartered in the university uh, Dartmouth College in this case and um, way back when I was just doing my PhD dissertation at Columbia University I became very interested in how senior leaders in any type of organization how they how they think how they behave what they do right what they do wrong and why and uh, some version of trying to answer those questions uh, have been has been part of my own journey for uh, for decades, and I did a lot of um, a lot of academic research along the way, and I've written uh, a whole bunch of books, as you mentioned. Why smart executives fail? Some uh, some listeners might uh, might know, which is quite a title, of course. <laughs> um, uh, it's about great, smart, talented people that somehow screw up really big, and why does that happen? Um, and you know what what's interesting is after I wrote that book and went on the road all over the world talking to managers, to leaders, um, to CEOs, uh, a big uh, a big question that kept coming up, aside from you know how can I avoid getting into your sequel, uh, was uh, <laughs> that's a know, good one. I bet. Yeah, yeah, we definitely what, don't want to be in there. <laughs> you know, they 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 really want to wanted to understand. You know, what's the best immunity? What's the best thing we can possibly do? And uh, to avoid falling into these traps, and and while of course I spent a lot of time in that in that book um, trying to answer that question, there was something I hadn't fully maybe appreciated, and that was 
um, the way I put it is this way. The, the, the real differentiator for any organization, whether it is a tiny startup, whether it's an established small firm, or whether it's a giant company, is the ability to generate and regenerate talent on a continuous basis. And even if it's a one-man or a one-woman show – that regeneration of talent means always learning something new. As soon as you get into a bigger organization with 5, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000 people, you have to keep bringing in new talent, new ideas. That's really – it's almost like our brains. You know, you have to keep learning new mm-hmm. things. Uh, we lose our brain cells as we get older. We have to keep trying uh, and extending and taking us our, taking ourselves out of our comfort zone and – and and all those things help us uh, help us grow, and that's that became really the uh, the key element in uh, in what differentiates successful uh, organizations, successful companies from unsuccessful. And once I once I realized that, I set out trying to find people that were really good at generating and regenerating talent on this continuous basis. And it turned out I met and talked to lots of entrepreneurs, some of whom became billionaires because they were so successful. Ralph Lauren, for example, is a good mm-hmm. is a good example. You know, Lauren Michaels in the music uh, in the um, from Saturday Night Live. Sure. Um, uh, people that are in, that know the foodie industry, Alice Waters, who has a restaurant called Chef Panisse in Oakland, and is really the godmother of uh, farm-to-table local sourcing of food. And uh, and and I started talking to these people and learning from these people. And in the end, uh, what what I came up with is really what are the what are the key drivers? What are the key differentiators from a leadership point of view that accounts for the ability to survive and thrive and succeed into the long term? Versus those that that can't do that, and that that's the essence of what Superboss is all about. Yeah, so so help again, just just bring it down to a, a practical sense so that we can see in in working form what exactly is a Superboss. You you uh, you titled the book that way, and it is such a an attractor to to my brain. I'm thinking, wow, how do you how do you get to be a Superboss? Are you born a Superboss? Can you become a Superboss? Is it something mm-hmm. that we're that that we're taught? What is a Superboss? So first of all, a, a super boss is someone that actually helps other people get better while also making a ton of money or a ton of success, depending on what your business is all about or if you're a nonprofit for that matter. So these are people that, that in a way, they're, they're leaders that create other leaders. They're, they're people that see the potential in others sometimes before they see it themselves. And, and, and when you do that as a, as a leader, not only are you helping these other people advance their own careers and get better but you're also surrounding yourself with better talent and i think it's not a part, particularly complicated idea to say the better the people around you the better your team the better your advisors the stronger you're going to be the more successful you're going to be so that's what a super boss a super boss is how do you how do you do it how do you get there it turns out everything i i learned everything i discovered about super bosses is is completely learnable it's it's not that you have to be born this way um it's that you you can learn you can learn how to be someone who finds talent so, so for example one of the key things that first things that super bosses do is they find a, what i call unusual talent they're not looking for people that everyone else is looking for they're looking for people that have something extra what does that mean it means people that are very smart, people that are flexible, people that are ultra competitive, mm-hmm. uh, people that are creative. And, and that combination is, is what they kept looking for. And, 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 you know, as another example of just on this idea of how do you find great people to be on your team and to hire as you're growing your business, they also go after people that others have not in, by, by going after, I call it untapped talent pools. Uh, you know, you, 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 what's an untapped talent pool? It's a, it's a bunch of people or a type of type, types of people or types of experience that maybe a lot of others haven't paid as much attention to. Could be women, could be minorities, could be mm-hmm. um, people that are above the age of 35 in Silicon Valley. <laughs> it could be <laughs> right. people from different industries. Um, uh, I've done this, you know, in a lot of workshops and consulting that I do around the, uh, around this topic. And I'd ask a group, you know, I'd explain this concept of untapped talent pools, and they start brainstorming. And the next thing you know, they've got they start to develop a to, a to do list of, you know, we need we need great people. Everybody needs great people. Here's where we can look, and it might involve, you know, looking for. Uh, military veterans when they never thought of it. I mean, it could be any any right. type of person, but it's just opening your mind. It's being creative, 
it's being open-minded even when it comes to sourcing talent. And that's just the first step in what super bosses do. I've, I've always found that the, that the leadership that I have been around, or maybe this is just prevalent in, in corporate America or maybe just the corporate, in the corporate world, is that so many leaders are so very protective of their, of their talent. And it's almost to the point where I feel like they're a little bit narcissistic about, uh, about their approach to business, which is, which is grossly un, uh, unduplicated. Uh, because they're being so protective. Do you find that that is a deterrent in creating a super boss? Yeah, this is a. I mean, it's counterintuitive because you don't want to lose great people. You want to you want to keep people with you. Of course, you do. Uh, but the best people want to keep growing, right? They want they want to go to the next stage. They want a bigger job, a bigger opportunity. They might even want your job, right? And you're not going anywhere. So you know, as soon as you realize that, and by the way, add in the millennial mindset. Where there are not too many people waiting to you know stick around for 25 years to get their gold watch or mm-hmm. even their Apple gold watch, I don't think is going to do it. <laughs> right. You know. Uh, so as soon as you start to realize that's the that's the way the best people think, and that's the way this entire generation of millennials are thinking. Well, uh, if your goal is to hoard talent, to retain talent. And that's your ultimate goal. It's actually going to be a losing proposition. You might as well realize this is the way the world is. And let's start being a little bit more strategic. Let's look for opportunities to continue to do business with people that have worked for us as they move on, even if they move out of your own company, which is really kind of a crazy thing to think about. But I saw this time and time again in, in with these super bosses. I mean, take – Lauren Michaels from Saturday Night Live. It's a mm-hmm. great example. Yeah. So many, you know, superstars come out of that show. And and so you have somebody like Jimmy Fallon. Uh, Jimmy Fallon was not going to stay in SNL. He was getting offers for movies, for TV, for all kinds of things. Well, it turns out that Lauren Michaels is the one that helped him get the job as the host of The Tonight Show. And who became the executive producer of The Tonight Show? None other than Lorne Michaels. <laughs> and so Jimmy Fallon is yeah. benefiting. His career is accelerating. He's no longer working directly for you. But Lorne Michaels is getting the financial and the reputational benefit of being the executive producer of the show. And not only that, but you become, you become known as the place you want to be. You want to work for you want you want to work for Doug you want to work for Sid you want to work for Lauren Michaels because if you spend 2 3 4 5 years there the opportunities you get are so great that 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 you're going to just keep attracting and this is the idea of generating and regenerating talent right you keep getting great people i call those types of people talent magnets so you have to be willing and open to this idea that you know retaining talent in and of itself we love it but you, you, you just can't win at that game because people don't think that way. Therefore, you got to be strategic. You got to think about how can you continue to earn a return on investment on that talent, if you will, even after they've left. Well, it's it's almost like uh, train them well enough so that they know everything that you do and that could take your job, but treat them well enough so that they never want to leave you. Or or if they do leave you, they remember you fondly and they like in the case of Fallon and uh, and Lauren Michaels, uh, c- collect that person and bring them along with you on the ride. Yeah, and remember, just recently, Jimmy Fallon was back as the guest host of SNL just in the last uh, couple of months, and that's what happens. Some of these people come back, continue to do business. They continue to and, – and they create business opportunities. It's a, it's a really logical thing, and, and let's not forget the loyalty element. It turns out and, – and this was really very interesting to discover. It, it turns out that when you manage people in this way, even though you increase the odds of them leaving – the reality is that they end up staying longer than they otherwise would have because they're getting the type of experience working for you that is so powerful, so meaningful, and, and such a learning opportunity that rather than staying for four years, they might stay for seven years. But they're not, they're not going to stay forever because these people are ready to change the world, and they and they need to go out and do that on their own. It, it's a great leadership model, and uh, and Super Bosses definitely is a great story to, uh, to 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 follow that model as well. So our Nice Guy community is now just getting to know you, Sid. Uh, Sid's a professor, Nice Guy community, so you're aware. Sid is a professor at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth College. Um, it, Sid has the face of, of of leadership changed over the years that you've been teaching future leaders. Have you seen what has been going on, and and are you noticing a trend any differently i i i am uh and 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 you you see it i think even more more and more and and that is uh 
I, 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 it used to be that you know you had this vision, this view that you have to be this overpowering, strong leader. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. have to dominate, and there's still people like that. And and it's not that they're going to be automatically unsuccessful, but I think there's a greater appreciation of the power of 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 humility. If you if you you know if you can imagine of making room for other people, um, not giving up the fact that you are strong, that you are capable, but that you have this. Um, uh, this security, this lack of insecurity, so that you can actually um, attract great talent, help other people get better uh, in the way that super bosses do. But even beyond that, that you're in, the, you're in, you're able to, you understand that to build and grow, you need you need other people to be part of that picture. You can't. It's not it's not a one man a one woman show. You can only go so far in any organization by by doing that. And uh, and I find this really interesting. Um, and not everyone actually appreciates this. I think uh, take uh, take this idea of of, a, of the strong dominant leader, the mm-hmm. self confident leader. Everyone's got to be. You got to be self confident to be successful in any walk of life. But I think if you just push that to its logical extreme, where you become more and more confident, you end up losing. I think the, yeah. the strongest lead there's a yin and a yang to these things. Uh, you want to be self confident. You need to be self confident, but you also want to be humble. At the same time, that combination, which sounds like it's like, how do you do that? But but the best leaders that I have worked with, that I've seen, that I've coached, that's exactly what they bring to the table. They're doing these two things that sound like opposites. They're doing them at the same time. And I think a deeper, a little bit of a deeper appreciation of that type of nuance is um, – um, is 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 coming on board? I think for uh, especially for younger, more millennial type leaders that uh, that that I'm working with. Well, as I look back to some of the the real champion leaders in my life, the ones that really made an impact in my world, those were the people that had uh, confidence in what they did, but humility and were, were, and showed gratitude. And so oftentimes, just missing that one little key. And, you know, there's not necessarily any any leadership uh, prompts in the word uh, gratitude, although I would tell you that it's probably, in, when I wrote my book, that was probably one of the areas that I spent so much time on, is just talking about leaders show gratitude and how essential that is as a part of uh, the leadership model as well. Yeah, what a, uh, what a great point that is. Uh, gratitude, respect, um, appreciation, and it's not just giving it out for the sake of giving it out. You have to, you have right, to earn it. Right. right. Uh, and and there's a high bar, uh, and the expectations are significant. But w- one of the things I found with with a lot of the super boss leaders and their proteges, because I interviewed literally hundreds of people for this research, and many many proteges, subordinates, team members of some of these super bosses, is this cycle that 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 they get on where their their boss pushes them hard. They, 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 there's a lot they need to do to be successful, but they are, they've so bought into what their super boss has done, what they're trying to do, that they've bought into the vision, they're inspired, that they actually do everything they can. They, they break through walls to accomplish that. And, and then the, the reward is, uh, gratitude, appreciation, you're in the inner circle, and here's something else. Let's raise the bar again. And they go back to it, and it becomes it becomes this, this addictive process in a positive way of feeling great about yourself, of what you're accomplishing, of what you're fulfilling uh, in partnership, in a sense, with your with your boss. So gratitude's a very big point, part of that, I think. And, and Sid, one of the things you, you actually mentioned in one of the action items that you talk about on the little Q&A that I send you before you, you come on the show, uh, there was an action step, and it was one word. And, and I'm going to remind you of the one word, and I just want you to spend just a second talking about it. The word, the action item is for, for proper leadership. You said, breathe. Now, I, I love it because it's so simple. Uh, are you a fan of meditation or tell me, tell me where that word came from for you? Yeah. It, well, it is part of the, comes a little bit out of the meditation world, and, and, but I've spent a lot of time, including working with and coaching senior executives on, on another touchy feely idea like self awareness mm-hmm. kind of knowing who you are where you're from how you think how you behave what your biases are the more we know about ourselves the the better we're going to be not only as as leaders but as 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 people and this idea of breathe um it just means you know um uh, take take a second to recognize where you're at in in real time take it just i mean you don't have to 
you know, lie on the psychiatrist's couch to do this. <laughs> right. We're talking about just, you know, every now and then take a step back and, and say, look, look, look what's happening around you. And you get a little, you do get a little bit more of an appreciation, as we were saying as well. Um, uh, and, and, and the other part of breathe that I think is really, uh, important is, uh, you know, we can we can outwork ourselves to a level of stress that makes you much less productive, much mm-hmm. less happy, and much less healthy. And that's not a winning formula either. And so the idea of of just kind of and, and letting letting that air in, in <laughs> into you, <laughs> yeah. you know, that sounds kind of simple and silly, you know, but it's it's a powerful idea. It's the most simple idea that has had the most profound uh, effects on my life. A couple of years ago, I started meditation, and it was literally just a 10-minute pause in my morning and my, my evening, so before I started work and, and when I was complete. And it really did give me this whole different level of self-awareness, this mindfulness that I was not aware of uh, at any point in my life before. And it just gives you that moment of reflection. I'm not a woo-woo meditator kind of guy, and that's yep. I've never been that way. But I'll tell you, that 20-minute pause, it, it's my time. I put it on my schedule. It is it is the one thing I do for myself. And I really feel like it has trem- it affected, my, uh, affected my life just in such positive ways. And, and I'm assuming that you feel the same way. I, I do, and let's make it even easier for uh, for the community. You don't have to start at ten minutes. You can start at one minute yeah. or two minutes, and you don't need to. I mean, you can yeah. go up longer as you need to, whatever whatever it is. But just doing anything at all, uh, just taking that pause, uh, makes makes a difference. And uh, uh, yeah, you know, we, a lot a lot of us we have we have like really complicated lives and a lot of travel and a lot of work and a lot of exciting things that are going on and. Uh, a lot of balls in the air um and and keeping some sense of of balance mm-hmm. in that is just such a and it feels good so you know it's not just that it's a it's it's good for you uh or or reduce your stress or whatever but you just feel good in in yeah. the moment uh and that that's that yeah so when with, with something has such a high upside and the initial investment cost is so low. <laughs> air, <laughs> air. It's very easy. <laughs> air, and 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 I'm going to say three minutes because yeah. I like the number three. So right. three minutes. Uh, that is not a, a very big barrier to entry for people to 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 start giving this a shot. One hundred percent agree. Well said, Sid. Well said. So how can our nice guy community get in touch with you or get a hold of your book or or just find out more about what you do, Sid? Well, so the book uh, is Super Bosses, and of course, you can get that on Amazon or anywhere else. You can Google it. You can look at my website, which is www.superbosses.com. Um, I'm on Twitter. Um, the handle is at Sid, S Y D, at Sid Finkelstein. Um, and uh, so there's lots of ways to kind of see what I'm doing and connect with me. And I write a lot for the BBC and many other places for Harvard Business Review. So uh, if you go on, uh, you go on the website and look at the media, you see some of the latest media. So you can see some videos of me talking about super bosses. So uh, you can you can get more than enough Sid. So you have too much Sid <laughs> if you really want. Oh, I love it. So our nice guy community, you know that you're going to want to get more of Sid. We'll make sure we put all of the information in the show notes, how to get to his website, how to get to his book. And I'm sure Strick will also put down there every way that you can reach Sid, maybe even including a cell phone number. You know, we know we, we never know what Strick's going to put in the show notes. Hopefully you haven't provided that to us, Sid, right? No, <laughs> I hope not. Oh, my God. <laughs> so do uh, you have time for uh, just a couple of personal questions and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up? Let's go. All right. Excellent. Do you have your phone anywhere near you, Sid? My phone is in front of me. OK, yes. excellent. Do you have an iPhone or something inferior? Um, superior <laughs> iPhone, the latest. <laughs> the, oh, the latest, even the latest. What do you have? The seven? Then you have the yes, it's the, the seven. All it's right, cool go to camera. your go to your texting app, Sid. Tell me the last text message you either sent or received. Um, okay, let's go see that. Uh, okay, uh, you <laughs> want right. me to tell you this? Yeah, if you can, that'd be fine. Okay, I will. Um, I uh, hope I'll be all right doing this. So I'm my sure daughter okay. <laughs> is in Paris right now working, mm-hmm. um, and she sent me a text. I guess it was uh, today. Um, so it's a uh, uh, she's already had her lunch six hours ahead, and she said just had dim sum lunch r- lunch with Francis uh, so and so, and he said hi. Francis happens to be one of my former students that uh, and my. Um, oh, <laughs> oh my God! How'd what, that happen? That's, that's, uh, that's what oh, happens God. when you take your cell phone out. 
Uh, Francis is calling. Why would you mention my name? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And go to your uh, go to your uh, your your photo app. Tell me the last thing you took a a picture of. Okay. Photo Sorry, app. Sid. Don't mean to put you on the. You know, we we want to know how somebody that is a professor at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth College actually handles their phones. So these are very telling uh, features. <laughs> So the last photo I took was last night. We had a little dinner party at our house, and one of my students, who's from China, taught us how to make dumplings from scratch. And so the photo is of her at the uh, with my wife at the stove, uh, putting the dumplings into the hot uh, water. Nice dim sum dumplings. It sounds like you're a foodie. Yeah, (laughs) there's definitely a a theme for sure. And last question, Sid, if you were going to get an invitation in the mail to to attend a party and you saw, you know, normally they put like the dress code on the uh, on the on the invitation. What would be your favorite dress code to receive on that invitation? Shorts and sandals. (laughs) Okay, good. Casual guy, huh? Right, a party on the beach. I think that would be good. I love it. I love it, Sid. Thank you so much for your answers. Thank you so much for uh, for your contributions to the uh, the leadership role, and thank you for creating Superboss. I'm I'm looking forward to digging in a little bit further. I just got into the the pretty much the beginning of the book, but I'm looking forward to uh, to hitting it hard and seeing seeing how I can become a Superboss. So thanks for your contribution. Thank you, Doug. I really enjoyed it. Nice guy community. Never underestimate the power of nice. Again, special thanks to uh, Sid Finkelstein for being on the show today. Professor Sid Finkelstein and uh, Steve O'Brien, take us out of here. The nice guys want to hear from you. Call 4242-DJ-DUG and ask any questions you like. Well, except about the cloud. Nobody understands the cloud. Uh, Don't bring up Santa Claus either. Doug's still a believer.